there, boys and girls. We gave you guys a tour of Super Training Gym a while back, but things have changed quite a bit, so let's check her out. We got some new shit in here. One of our uh, latest additions is our big ass fan. Is our big ass fan. Get to the chopper. <laughs> that sucker right there uh, has uh, really helped pull down the gym here in Sacramento, get pretty hot, and uh, it's really efficient. So if you're in some sweaty ass gym, you might want to look into something like that. A little expensive, but totally worth it. Uh, you see over here, we got Nano Lifts Galore. Um, a lot of things here at Super Training are specialized. We got spatial people like myself who need spatial things. And uh, this is called a buffalo bar. Basically a buffalo bar is just a bent bar. It's bowed in the middle and allows the lifter to uh, kind of relax the shoulders uh, when you're trying to jam yourself into a squat position. We got some different barbells over here. We got a bar from my boy Havoc, kind of a football bar. Um, you can load some weight onto it. We use it for extensions and curls, uh, things like that. And actually, the thing is kind of hard to hear, but this thing's hollow, and you can fill it with whatever the hell you want to fill it with, water, uh, whatever you want to put in there. Got another type of football bar. Like when you fill it with stuff, it's going to kind of create a little bit of instability and make it more harder to move around. Got another football bar type thing. We got uh, just some regular power bars, fat bar to help uh, improve grip. Uh, makes it very strenuous to try to grip this big old fat black thing. Can I get a hey now? Hey now. Uh, and then we have, uh, I believe this is a West Side Barbell Bar. And this thing is really good for filing down your nails. It's uh, probably the best uh, power lifting bar. Uh, well, it's not probably. It is the best power lifting bar on the market. I have no affiliation with any of this kind of stuff. I have a little bit of affiliation with Rogue Fitness, but I would suggest it anyway. It's a great bar. Louis Simmons did a great job with that piece. It blows away a Texas power bar by a lot. Trap bar, uh, you've seen this, a lot of high school kids use this. Uh, it's a different way to deadlift. You're deadlifting with your hands uh, kind of outside your legs and your hands are this way rather than this way. Um, works your legs a little bit more than your lower back. Another buffalo type bar here, Cambridge bar. Uh, squat bars, deadlift bars. Squat bars are a little longer. Deadlift bars are a little thinner. Gotta have everything just right. We can't lift with the same bar. Uh, we got uh, safety squat bar kind of just gives you uh, Changes the center of gravity a little bit makes kind of round over a little bit more helps build up the upper back a little more over here We have a rack of uh, Some slingshot material. We got uh, these are called hip circles got some gangster wraps hanging out here gangster wrap made me do it um, Hip circle you guys seen this before they're kind of everywhere now if you don't know what it is Then you're not paying attention uh, we got chains. The chains help to do what is called accommodating resistance. I don't know why they call it accommodating because it actually is quite painful. It's not very accommodating to me. But what happens is, as you lower the weight towards the ground, the squat, deadlift, bench press, whatever movement it is that you're doing, there's gonna be more chain piled up on the ground and less chain weight on the bar. You can see this is like totally lax now and almost weightless. Each chain weighs 20 pounds. There's two of them on there. If my math is correct, that would be 480 pounds. No, that'd be 40 pounds. We got 20 pounds, 20 pounds. We got about 40 pounds of chain on there. As you go to lift the weight up, we'll, let's just say for argument's sake, we'll say this is uh, five pounds just because there's a little bit of weight here. And then as you come back up to the top, depending on how high up you went, you would have an additional 20, 30, 40 pounds, depending on how high up you came. Um, what the chains help you do is is to uh, produce more force and be able to kind of push through uh, sticking points and stuff like that. Also helps to create some uh, constant tension for those bodybuilders out there that want to get more jacked and tan. And uh, speaking of being jacked and being tan and being wealthy and being strong, this is Stan the Rhino efforting, ladies and gentlemen, in full force, up here doing a deadlift, Stan came in here a couple months ago. He comes back here every once in a while. 
Stan's actually looking into starting a super training gym in uh, Las Vegas where he lives with his uh, wifey and kids. And uh, hopefully that, uh, that's coming to you soon, I hope, because I think uh, everybody will love it. It'll be a nice destination out there in Vegas when we go out there for the Olympia and stuff like that. But Stan right here is pulling a 771 a pound deadlift. Uh, the guy's, I think he's like 47, 48 years old. Uh, but the Rhino just is, is always, in always in shape. He's always strong and he's always a fucking monster. We got another monolith here, box squats. Box squat boxes for box squats and uh, step ups and whatnot. Um, those of you that don't know what a box squat is, need to get with the program. Box squatting is highly effective. I kind of hate to hear people say, "Oh, I, you know, I'm a raw lifter and I lift in this federation, so I can't do a box squat." Box squats are fantastic for everybody. Uh, you should be able to find a way to fit them into your program here and there. Great way to strengthen your hips. Um, it's just a different type of squat. How hard is that to get on board with or understand? A pause squat's not something you're gonna do in a competition, and neither is a motherfucking front squat. But you do those in your training. Throw in a box squat here and there. They're highly effective. Uh, they're, they're not too bad to recover from because the eccentric concentric chain is broken up a little bit. And uh, I personally have loved them for years and always thought they're, they're uh, super effective. You got guys like Matt Wenning breaking world records. He's doing box squats. When Stan Efferding was training with me, uh, breaking world records, he was utilizing the box squat. Doesn't matter if you're raw or natty or not natty, none of that matters. You can still do a box squat, great exercise. Got another monolith here. This one's an outward facing monolith. I actually built this one myself in my backyard. That's why it's got our logo up here. Just me, Silent Mike, and a couple of uh, manual labor workers that we picked up. We learned that from a film called Bigger, Stronger, Faster. Um, we have a, uh, a cambered bar right here. This bar is really good for good mornings, uh, squats, anything else you can think of. We've even used to uh, deadlift with this bar as well. Right here we have Big Roy, the remains of Big Roy. All right, Pete. Big Roy's not actually dead, but he's no longer with us, so he might as well be. Uh, he has no more goals, by the way. Over here we have one of the most expensive items in the gym, these stupid ass kilo plates. Um, I don't know why we use kilo plates in the United States. Um, and, and we use, uh, you know, it just makes, it makes the math so hard all the time. And I don't know. But anyway, that's what we compete with, and so that's why we have them here at the gym. Here we have a lovely saying from my lovely deceased brother, Mad Dog Mike Bell. I'd rather be dead than average. That was said in the film, uh, Bigger, Stronger, Faster. Uh, over here we got some, uh, we got some plates that I designed with Rogue Fitness right here. These are uh, called wagon wheels. And uh, basically what those do is they help replace lugging around big heavy shit like these, uh, like these things here. Um, for years we were pulling off the blocks and we were breaking the blocks and the blocks were moving every time we went to do reps. And so I said, you know what, this is lame. There's gotta be a better way. So I made a bigger plate. How did I make a bigger plate? No one else made a bigger plate, so I had to try to figure it out on my own. And that's what I did. I went to a machine shop locally that my father-in-law used to own. And uh, he made the first uh, plates like that. And then I went to Rogue Fitness and said, hey, let's manufacture these things. And that's what we did. If I'm good at anything, it's just uh, taking some action and uh, just doing stuff. I don't think people really understand the different things that I do, but if you really actually look at it and you, and you were to tr try to apply a little bit of logic to anything that I do, all I'm ever really doing is tons and tons of testing. When I throw something out there uh, on Instagram, that's funny. That's a test. It's a test to see does it fucking work or does it not work. Uh, I'll, I'll throw up in something informative. That's a test, see if it works. Are people digging the informative stuff? I'll throw up uh, something uh, about the products. Uh, say, hey, you know, this compression cuff helps with uh, tendonitis in your elbow. That's another test. If it only gets like 400 likes and no one cares, uh, then I, I will most likely uh, discontinue reposting some of that stuff. But it's all testing and it's all a way to try to uh, figure out what works and what doesn't work. You make something like that, the same thing, just take action and make it. Well, who does it hurt? Uh, just, you know, just take the initiative to uh, create something, get it out there and see if it works. And if it works, keep running with it, just like I did with the slingshot. When people come here and the gym is free, they're blown away all the time. 
And you know what people usually tell me? They say, fuck man, I wish I could do that. People aren't always gonna be able to do these certain things that I'm doing. However, that doesn't mean you can't do your own thing. I think that's kind of the message that when you hear some of these other uh, people on the internet uh, trying to give you a pep talk, trying to get you hyped up. Um, even myself, when I put out motivational, inspirational things, I love doing that. Um, but I'll tell you right now, you can't do what I'm doing. You can only do what you can do, and that's what you need to try to focus in on. You know, I am lucky. I am very fortunate. I have a fucking awesome family. I have an awesome wife. I have an awesome support system. I have an awesome team. I have awesome people around me. Um, but part of that awesomeness is because, uh, you know, because of the different things that I'm able to do and because of the different things um, I'm able just to kind of promote um, being positive and, and uh, just trying to kick a lot of ass in many different um, avenues. Uh, having people around me that are successful and having people around me that are positive is all kind of part of the, the bigger picture and the bigger plan. And if someone's not positive and not supportive, then they're just not really, they're not really part of what I'm doing. Take you through the rest of the gym here. Um, we got a uh, booming sound system here. I don't know much about any of this kind of stuff, but I believe this is a subwoofer. I don't know what it does. I think it just helped make some booming noise. Here's some of the control systems here. We got some uh, retired stuff in here. We gotta get this board back up because this board's pretty amazing. Uh, this is the old uh, record board. We gotta get that bad boy back up. You know, even though it represents a different time and a different era of Super Training Gym, I think sometimes people get frustrated with me because I say strongest gym in the West. And people want to point out some of these different gyms that are in the West that are strong. But part of being the strongest gym in the West is, is the history of the gym, the current members of the gym, what the gym actually does, and the success of the gym and the products that I have uh, are also the reason why we're the strongest gym in the West. This here is a, just a template. We still follow a lot of this stuff, uh, some West Side barbell type stuff. We've got to hang that back up so people know that we're on page 43. Uh, over here is, uh, this is important to have. This is the deadlift platform. We have that deadlift platform over there, which is more for band pulls and stuff like that. But this platform is special because you can't just deadlift anywhere in the gym, right? You have to have the designated area that costs a lot of money and has a lot of extra padding on it for no real reason uh, to <laughs> deadlift off of. Dumbest thing, dumbest thing ever, probably, is, is this thing right here. Because, and even in powerlifting meets, that everyone's there, everyone's always obsessed with having like a real platform. And I've been to meets before where they don't have a real platform; they just have extra mats down, and everyone, <laughs> everyone gets pissed about it. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense because you don't really need a platform for any particular reason. Uh, there's no reason why you can't just lift off rubber mats. And here is the. Uh, the, sling, the slingshot logo. This uh, font right here is uh, from the uh, slasher movie Friday the 13th. If it looks familiar at all, that's kind of part of it. And if you can see, it kind of bubbled out from the wall a little bit. I was really happy with this when I put this bad boy up. Give you a little education here. This is a uh, power as in power magazine. This right here, this little signature here. Uh, this was told to me by a fat friend of mine named Chris. He's got an Italian last name. He used to work for House of, the company House of Pain. I can't remember his last name right now. But I just saw him uh, a few weeks ago. And he didn't even remember telling me this. But he's the reason why I put my name right there. Because he said, I was talking about patents and I was talking about trying to figure out how to make this thing mine. And uh, trademarking it and stuff. And, he said, you know what? He goes, in the beginning, he's like, just fucking put your name on there. It's that way, it's yours. Well, there we go, Mark Bell Slingshot. Circle R. Is that your actual handwriting? Cause, uh... No, that's Andy's. <laughs> no, you wouldn't be able to read my handwriting. You got a, I, the third grade, a third grade uh, writing ability. Uh, so, a uh, Circle C doesn't actually really mean anything when you see those. Um, or, I'm sorry, not a Circle C, a, a, a TM, a trademark. Uh, doesn't really mean anything. You can kind of put a TM next to anything. Uh, I actually do that all the time, just to kind of throw people off. Circle R is legit. That's a registered trademark. It's uh, something that you could really uh, take somebody out with, but uh, TM doesn't really mean anything. Kind of more of a uh, temporary thing, I guess you'd say. Over here, um, we have 
a, um, a box of uh, these uh, protein bars that we got made special that look like donuts, but they react in the body like protein bars. Uh, over here, we got the ST, the original ST, well, not the original ST logo, but an ST logo. And, uh, over here, we got some gummy bells, again, with some logos on them. I figured, why not? Why not get something nice that looks cool? I got some like specialty stuff. This thing's from Elite. Um, it's a nice piece because uh, when we're doing an incline bench out of the rack, it's very hard to get a good lift off. This has a nice platform for it. You can get behind somebody and really give them a decent spot that way. Um, over here we got one of these uh, kind of a almost like a like a BOSU ball type thing. This is uh, called the Vicor piece, and um, just makes the lift harder. You know, like. When you're doing assistance movements, you're doing uh, uh, dumbbell presses and uh, overhead presses, things like that. If, if, you, if you're able to get a hold of something like this, uh, I was able to get it through a buddy of mine, Greg Nigro. He was the one who hooked it up. But um, if you're able to get a hold of something like this, it just makes the lift a little bit more challenging. Who really cares about how much you actually dumbbell press? If this is making you dumbbell press 60 pounds as opposed to 100 pounds, uh, but it's still very challenging, then and this is kind of a win in my, my opinion. It's good to be able to train both ways. Anytime you have the ability to make an exercise a little bit more difficult, a little bit more challenging, I think that's a good thing. Here's a 45 degree back raise. Just help build up the lower back, hamstrings. You get, we got this beefed up uh, piece right here. This is really just to dry out my knee sleeves because my knee sleeves get sweaty. Slingshot knee sleeves. Um, so this uh, like $2,000 piece is mainly for that. This is called the glute ham raise, made by Rogue Fitness, and it's helped build up the hamstrings. Um, really hits your hamstrings. Uh, uh, I would I would say it's like the equivalent of a uh, maybe like a pull up for your lower body. It's really really brutal, uh, much much harder and much more demanding than a leg curl. However, a regular leg curl uh, with a machine is still a great exercise. So if you have access to that, it's still a good movement. Forgot to point out the speakers up top. Look how big those suckers are. You gotta have good music, right? Yeah, you gotta have it cranking. People ask about motivation and inspiration and stuff like that all the time. And I almost always forget that having some good music blasting uh, always helps. Uh, and a song that always works for everybody in every gym, every powerlifting gym in the, in the world, whether you're in freaking Russia or here in the US or wherever, is thunderstruck from ACDC works every time 100% effectiveness here we have a beefed up bench again from elite uh, high quality bench nice wide pad uh, helps kind of capture the shoulders a little bit better than a regular bench the pads also soft so your body kind of sinks into it a little bit better than a regular bench press right here we got some uh, just some bumper plates People on the interwebs like to uh, comment about our bumper plate usage because we don't actually lift anything heavy. We just uh, make like movie productions that make it look like we're lifting really heavy because we stack a lot of these on there. So that's kind of what we do with that. Over here we got another bench, another comp bench. My disgusting sandals back there. We got Jim McPhee over here doing some uh, deadlifting. <laughs> and we got a... Uh, like a bent over row piece here, a T-bar row. Help build up the lats, upper back. We got a uh, lat pull down thing over there. We got the pit shark, or as we like to call it, pit shart. Try not to shit yourself when you're doing this. This is a great piece uh, for squats. We, uh, I don't know, maybe kind of a little bit like a leg press. This is uh, quite different than a regular squat though due to the fact that the weights are just kind of uh, pulling you down towards the ground um, because you, you, you're wearing the belt around your waist um, and you don't have the weight on your back. So no spinal loading here when you're doing this exercise, um, but you're still getting a lot of great uh, leg work. Back here, we got the quote from the Ultimate Warrior. Pretty goddamn cool. Always been a wrestling fan and when Ultimate Warrior started uh, doing some of his uh, speeches 
a while back before he passed. I just thought a lot of the things he was doing at the time were really cool. I wish he was around a little bit longer because uh, I just thought he was uh, so fired up and so inspirational. I thought it was really cool what he was doing at the time and the different things he was preaching. Um, I'd, I'd crank him up in my headphones as when I went for walks and stuff like that in the morning. And I just, I was really inspired by it. Uh, we got a reverse hyper machine right here. Another one right here. They uh, are also really good. Also serve as reading racks for power. They're really good. Yeah, they're really good for collecting stuff. Uh, but it is a good piece for lower back, kind of therapeutic for the lower back, helps stretch out the spine a little bit. We got sleds, we got a prowler, we got a strongman type of shit, yoke walk, hammer strength piece. Um, we got some of this shit over here, these kettlebells. Um, we got these thingies from Chris Duffin. Some of the guys use this once in a while, helps rehabilitate the shoulders. What's that thing called? Shoulder? A shoulder rock, yeah. ROK, shoulder rock. You just swing this bad boy around. I won't swing it around so I don't knock out the cameraman, but. Here, this is a wrap from Road Fitness. Uh, it's got these seat belt straps here. Uh, the seat belt straps uh, are quite different than uh, just lifting off the pins. When you lift off of pins, like when you have the pipe in the rack, like this one over here. You have the pipes in the rack, still very effective, and uh, you can still do partial range of motion movements that way, uh, but it just kind of hurts. The weights tend to really vibrate uh, on those pins. The seat belt straps uh, are, can also be set up like as a spotting, spotting device, and then also uh, whenever you're pressing off them or pulling off them, you're not getting that like vibration through your hands and it just killing your joints and tendons, ligaments. This is a bamboo bar. You guys seen me talk about this many times before. Kind of an assistance movement that we do here at Super Training, uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of 20 to 50 reps at a time. You know, normally that's what we do with it. Every once in a while, I'll try to go heavy on it and take it to uh, some heavy sets of 10 reps or so. Uh, this is a jacked and tan machine. This is uh, our little bodybuilding unit here. Um, you got a lat pull down. Um, you got a, a cable crossover. Hashtag pec deck. Get your cable crossovers over here. Get jacked. Got another tricep piece on the other side there. You do, you can adjust these things and uh, you know, come down here and do some face pulls in between sets of other things. You can do uh, just anything you can think of off of this shit. And right here, you got a, just a seated row. It's nice to have a seated row. You can kind of load that thing up and handle some weight on there. And let me take you through the podcast room. So let's see, over here we got the slingshot patent. This is patent number one. I got two patents on it. Uh, I am an inventor. I got proof right here. <coughs> um, anyway, that's that. Some of the original drawings that were for the uh, patent. Over here, we got some power magazines. Uh, some of the different power magazines over the years. Magazine's been out for about five years. This isn't all the issues. We don't have all of them up yet. I need to get them all, I need to get more of them framed and get more of them up. Um, this is my shoe rack. It's got some spider webs on it. We have to clean her, clean her up a little bit. Uh, so here we got some uh, Olympic lifting style shoes. Reebok, I'm a Reebok sponsored athlete. And so I got Reebok sponsored stuff. Like these cool ass fucking pumps. How cool are these? Hear that? That's me getting more, the sound of me getting more jacked. Um, and then over here, we have uh, some of the Reebok CrossFit Lite TRs, AKA the Reebok Power Thing Shoe that I helped Reebok design with my homie, Jesse Burdick. And uh, nowadays, there's many different kinds and many different styles. You can customize these and they go all the way up to, I believe, I think they go all the way up to a size 18 when you customize them. I know some of you big guys were asking uh, how, how big they go, but I'd also say uh, that <clears throat> we have guys in here that swear they're like a 14 and they'll wear a 12 in these because we made these big boy shoes on purpose. We made them large on purpose. Um, that's that for some of those shoes. And then so this um, represents, shoe number one did so well, uh, they made shoe number two. 
They also make these in like a low top. They're making a mid top. They're really doing a lot of different things with it now. And uh, as of right now, these, this shoe in particular is not available quite yet. This is a super training shoe. And on this side, it says, get strong or die trying. We are working on this part because that did not come out so great. This is just a sample. That's why it says right here, the word sample. Um, so yeah, this is not being sold yet or anything quite like that just yet, but it will be available soon. Some of the inside is kind of worn away on it, but it did say it's the longest gym in the West right there. Uh, some of the differences with this shoe, uh, they toughened it up a little bit, a little bit more of a cast back here by the heel. You can kind of see there, here's the squishiness up here. And then here's this <clears throat> much harder part down here. It almost looks like a, um, like a skateboarding shoe mixed with the old shoe, like thicker around that. Yeah, this, this shoe is, um, it's pretty awesome. It's pretty, it's pretty intense. I mean, the first, the first shoe was great. This is just a step up from the first shoe. Um, still has the thin soles down the bottom. Still very comfortable shoe. Anybody who's bought these, uh, they always make that comment of like, shit, man, I just wear them all the time. They're super comfortable. Um, the other thing is that we wanted to do with the first ones, but we didn't have a chance to, is we wanted to tighten up the way the laces are. And so they've uh, changed the holes of the laces. And you kind of see, when I go to pull on this, it's going to stay there. If I, if I go this way, it's going to stay there. Whereas before, when you would cinch up, some of you guys might know what I'm talking about, when you cinch up, it would all come back unraveled again. You had to kind of really work towards getting it tight. But I wanted to really make sure that the that the cinching down process was a little easier. And then up here, they made these smaller kind of grommet holes again to kind of really help you really lock down the shoe. I think it's important that when you're starting to squat heavy that you uh, really lock it in place and, and get it the right way. And just for all you haters out there, it still, it still says, I won't say it out loud, these people's names that should not be named, shall not be named, right there. Don't get upset. That's what it says. But this is the evolution of our sport, and this is where things are going. And without big sponsors and big companies, uh, we will be less popular than we already are. So uh, why not just embrace uh, some of the bigger companies coming in, and and hopefully, um, hopefully all the bigger companies come in. I won't name who they are, but hopefully they all start to arrive in this sport of power. Thing. And here is the podcast room. This is where the magic happens. We have got more lights. If we need more lights, Mr. Cameraman Pants. So really light her up. I'm wearing shorts. Mr. Cameraman Shorts. Uh, this is the old uh, ST logo at the old gym. Uh, that was the old super training that was inside Midtown Strength and Conditioning. This is kind of a cinder block wall and it just had a really cool feel to it. So Jim McD uh, took the time to take a high resolution picture and turn it into a high resolution poster. Uh, over here, we got some different things up here representing some different shit that we talk about a lot on the podcast. Uh, we're going to throw up some of the sponsors up here as well. These things are interchangeable. You can see you can just go yay like that. If I wanted to switch myself out and put silent mic there, I easily could. And you just go and you're locked in there. Same with the rock. The rock is disposable at any time. We can get rid of them at any time. And we can put Stone Cold Steve Austin here if we have to. What? Very easy to do. And then right here, uh, we have, uh, I'll just show you a little bit. We got a ton more of these things. I don't want to show them all to you because um, I don't want to get my fat fingerprints on them, but. Okay. So we could always put something like that in there if for whatever reason we wanted to. I guess got a bunch of them made up. They're sort of random. Uh, here is the podcast desk. Um, you know, I don't like to do anything cheap. So we got a $3,000 podcast desk and uh, it's a stand-up desk, which is kind of nice because I don't like sitting down and it's uh, got a perfect height for me. It was just kind of lounge here, lean on here and be able to talk. Uh, podcast gives us um, me, Mike and Jim McD. Uh, it just gives us a different voice. It gives us a different way to speak to people. Um, I've been on YouTube since 2006. Had Super Training Gym since about 2006. 
Um, I've been able to speak at seminars, able to speak at some conferences over the years, um, able to speak on other people's podcasts, um, and add a voice through uh, f other forms of social media, just like everybody else, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, uh, and uh, also to be able to speak to people through uh, Power Magazine. Um, but this gives me a different way to speak to people uh, in a much different way. Um, it's almost like uh, people are like eavesdropping on a conversation that we're having uh, amongst ourselves and um, people really like it. A lot of people that listen to it really identify with it. They, um, people kind of feel like they're, they're here. They feel like they're part of what we're doing uh, when we speak to them on the podcast. The other thing that I really like about the podcast is it allows us to um, it allows us to really uh, showcase some of these people and some of these lifters uh, the way that they need to be showcased. The way that I know some of these guys is much different than uh, what a lot of you guys are usually seeing um, through social media. And so rather than you know having Chad Wesley Smith and Stan Efforting, rather than having those guys just be known for like being tough or being strong or, or holding world records and stuff like that, I wanted people to know their backstory. I wanted people to know um, more about them, know them more like uh, intimately, know them more as like a person that they can actually identify with. When Chad Wesley Smith was here, he told me things I never, I've never heard him talk about before. I, I had no idea that he was adopted. I mean, it, some cool stories have been coming out of the podcast, and people have been sharing all kinds of stuff. Stan Efforting, you know, mentioned that his mother dealt with addiction uh, and still dealing with addiction. Um, for years and it's just really cool to hear people open up and, and to hear people you know give you give you their give you their heart and you start to really understand you know kind of like why these guys have these world records it's not just because they put their time in the gym it's because they have really dedicated themselves and really focused in on something and they, they don't want to uh, they, they want to just be they want to be something more than just average they'd rather be dead than average in a way I guess you'd say and that's fine. Uh, over here, we got the store. We sell some shit out of here. We got uh, some slingshots, some Jack and Tan shirts. Jack and Tan shirts. We got some singlets. We got some knee sleeves. We got some wrist wraps. All kinds of different shit that we sell out of here. Um, obviously, slingers. Slanging those slangers. And uh, we got some supplements. Sell some of my own protein out of here. Slingshot protein, hydrolyzed whey protein. This sucker sells for 60 bucks and some people cry about it, but this is the best fucking protein you're gonna find anywhere. It tastes better than any protein out there. I know everyone says that, but it's true with my product. <laughs> Shit tastes really good. We got a bunch of other stuff over here, compression cuffs, hip circles, the new hip circle, the black grippy hip circle, stuff like that. Um, and then we also sell a little bit of cocaine, but that's usually out of the back. We got some bathrooms. I won't show you those because we blow them up all the time and they can get quite gross. <laughs> 